Well, good morning, everyone. Oh, a little bit better than that. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, fantastic. I am so excited to have each of you with us for our Winter Student Leadership Summit. I'm pleased to have in the room, for those of you viewing with us out there in your schools, we have in the room with us Tar River, Webb High School, Northern Granville Middle School, we have Granville Academy, Phoenix Academy, and who else, who am I missing? Anyone? All right, we also have some student leaders with us from our high school summit last spring who will be sharing with us later today and an array of district staff who will lead us throughout the course of the next two to three hours. So I'm just delighted to have all of you with us for this portion of our leadership work this year. Now I have to tell you, all of you, no matter what school, I've heard phenomenal things about how your leadership skills are being used in your school buildings. Your principals are bragging about each and every one of you. So thank you for carrying the banner for character and leadership across our district. With that being said, I'm honored at this time to begin today's work with our Pledge of Allegiance. We have a set of twins doing this for us this morning. I would like to ask Emery, and Lindsay P. to please come forward at this time. Everyone, please stand. Come right on over here. Very good, right there. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Excellent. Thank you. You may be seated. At this time, I would like to ask our board members who've joined us today to please come forward at this time. Let's give them a round of applause. They're the leaders of our district. I'm delighted to introduce to you our board chairwoman, Mrs. Glenda Williams. We have Mrs. Danielle Hayes, and we have Mrs. Ethel Anderson. Mrs. Williams, your comments at this time. <laughs> This is the fun part of being on the Granville County School Board, <laughs> to see students stepping out, leading their schools. You represent the best of the best, and we appreciate everything you do in your schools to make them special. You are special to us. Um, I will have to salute the JF Webb High School. Class of 69. <laughs> and. And please don't do the math. Just don't do the math. I, I started school when I, uh, high school when I was six. <laughs> but anyway, all of our schools are special. But uh, we do welcome you here, and we'll be enjoying every moment of spending we get to spend with you today. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Thank you all so very much. Thank you. We really, really appreciate the support of all of our board members. Several have to work and had some engagements this morning, but all of our board members support the work of our student leaders. I would also like to begin the day by shouting out this next group. And students, I need you in your schools and in this room to really give a resounding applause for this next group. Will all of our leadership advisors please stand at this time, wherever you are. If you are an advisor, please stand. Yay! <laughs> Aren't these individuals amazing? They do a fantastic job, and we are ever so grateful for the hours you devote and contribute to these young people. Just pouring into their lives means the world to us, and I, trust me, it means the world to them. So thank you, one and all, for what it is you do. The next group we really appreciate this morning, where are our bus drivers who got everyone here safe and sound? <laughs> Stand up, wave your hand, let us see you. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, and thank you. So there are a lot of people who make sure this work continues, and we're just grateful for all of you. So now let the work begin. I would like to at this time ask Mrs. Becky Bishop, 
Mrs. Shelby Hunt, Ms. Angela Cogdell. Will you all come up to the front, please? These are our, our leaders of today's work. These individuals, where's Ms. Ratcliffe? All right, she says no, but let, let me show you off if you don't mind. She's new to our team, and I'm so pleased to have her join our Granville County team once again. <laughs> this is our leadership team on the district level. Please join me in a round of applause for them. They tolerate me. <laughs> I'm so grateful to have these women work closely with the vision we have for this because we can be leaders in this work today, but guess who's gonna replace us? You guys. And we want to make certain you're equipped to do so and to do even more and to do bigger and better. So our investment in you makes sure we have a retirement when we leave this place. <laughs> so we're happy about that. No, seriously, we really love this work on behalf of children and, and what it is you do. Because every time we get together, you outperform our expectations and we love seeing it. So keep up the good work. I'm going to turn it over to them this time for today's work. So, ladies, I believe we have videos. Isn't that right? We asked you all to show off what you did this fall, and you did. You sent us videos of your work. And we're sharing this because we want you to generate ideas in your brain to take back to your schools to help think about, hey, we can do that, or, you know, we, let's think about this. So take out your pencils and your paper and your pens, and let's get ready to share from the videos you are about to see from one another. Ms. Hunt, let's turn it over to you. Good morning, everyone. So at this time, we want you to just sit back and relax and watch all of you guys' hard work that you have been doing so far, and we appreciate all that you have been doing. School year, the leadership team has taken turns speaking in the morning announcements. We also shared tips and quotes about respect, responsibility, fairness, and kindness. Passion wishes to the flag of the United States of America and the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, for liberty and justice for all. Equal is everyone getting what they need. Fair is everyone getting what they need to be successful. We will always be fair, but it won't always feel equal. This year, our leadership team has made posters about our monthly character traits. These are some of our examples. When you blame others, you will give away your power to change. Keep calm and respect others. Make a plan and just do it. program has made a PBIS video of what to do and what not to do in school. We taught the students at BSES how to behave in the cafeteria, hallways, bathrooms, classroom, and playground. Let's make this school! Okay, everyone, we had a little technology glitch, but we're going to get back to that. Um, it's, the video is much longer. It's supposed to be all of your schools, so we'll come back to that. And right at the moment, we'll move on to our next little section until we can get the video going.
So what we have next is would you rather? So with this activity, I am going to need all of your help. So in just a moment, I'm going to ask you a question, and then I'm going to ask you to go and stand either on the left side of the room or the right side of the room. So even where you are in your school buildings, you will do this activity as well. So our first question is, would you rather... Would you rather live a week in the past or live a week in the future? If you would like to live a week in the past, I ask everyone to go to your left and stand. Okay, y'all get up and move. Or if you would like to live a week in the future, go to your right and stand. I got someone walking saying, why would you want to live in the past? Well, we're going to find out. So while you are in your sections, if you're on the left or the right, find a partner or two and then share with your partner why you chose to stand on that side. <laughs> the past is on this side. Okay, about five more seconds. Got some good conversations going on. So everyone, I would like for you to freeze. Okay, so do I have anyone on this side that would like to share why you would like to live a week in the past? Come on, come on on down. Come on down. Okay, yes. back to the past and fix mistakes yeah. very good okay great answer all right then I have this young man over here would like to say why he would like to live in the future so I would go into the future find an invention that would be important in the past and then make it in the past so we would already have it in the future okay all right great answers thank you both all right our next question would you rather Explore a newly discovered plant, go over to the left, or would you rather explore a newly unearthed ancient civilization? So think about it really hard. A new plant to your left or a newly unearthed ancient civilization? Oh, we have a lot of people in the room on the ancient civilization. I wonder where we are in the school buildings, which sides you picked. All right, find a partner and give you a couple of seconds to talk with your partner and say why you chose this side. So, oh, we have grown-ups over here on the left. Yo, go. Okay, freeze. All right, we have very few people over here on our left that wants to explore a newly discovered plant. Do we have one of our lovely speakers that would like to respond? Um, the reason I picked explore a newly discovered plant was because plants are part of science and they have their own genetics, and I want to be a genetic scientist when I grow up. Oh, that is awesome. You go. And I tell you, this, I can tell you, I'm going to be looking forward to this guy when I need that. <laughs> but I, my reason, too, is because of the plants. You know, we know that plants now, what they're using is curing a lot of different illnesses and, you know, all of those type things. So I, I'm looking for that. Yes. 
My reason is the same as Ms. Anderson's. Um, I think a lot of our medications and things that help disease come from or plant-based, and I think there are a lot of things out there we need to cure. So that's my reason. Perfect. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And then on this side, we have a student that would like to share about the newly unearthed ancient civilization. Um, the reason why I chose the unearthed civilization is because it would have been much calmer and it wouldn't have been as urbanized as um, the life is now. And it wouldn't have been so overthrown by people who are greedy for money and um, always worried about certain clothes and stuff because you wouldn't have you wouldn't know any different or know any better than what you already know. Okay, thank you. Way to go. Okay, our next question. Would you rather never age physically or never age mentally? Ooh, hard question. Physically over on this side, mentally over on this side. Oh, the, the, the room changed this time. Oh, we're on different sides. All right, find your partner and talk about why you would rather be on no, never age physically side or the never age mentally side. Okay, freeze. All right, so on this side, we have RJ, who I was just sharing by his name. Why would you choose that you would never age physically? So I don't get wrinkles. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, do we have anyone else since we have a large amount on this side? Okay, you, sweetie. I feel like to get through life, you need to age, you need to, your mentality needs to grow because without knowing certain things or like having the right sense of, I don't know, like, yeah, then you're not going to be able to get through the hardships of life or serious things that you need to go through. Excellent. Excellent. I agree. Okay. Now on this side, all right, who do we have that's going to share that you would never age mentally? Sure. I, uh, I just really wouldn't want to lose my sharpness as I get older. Um, you know, I, I really, also, if you don't age physically, you kind of have to watch everybody you love die. I don't really need that. So, yeah. Okay. Anyone else want to share? Okay. Good. All right. Our next question. Would you rather live where there is a freedom but little technology or live in a technologically advanced society with strict government control. So you want to go on this side if you want to live this, there is freedom. And then you want to go on this side if you want to live in a technologically advanced society. Oh, wow. The movement in the room has definitely changed. Oh, no one is on this side. Okay, take a moment and share with your partners. People in the school buildings, if you can text Miss Bishop, if there is anyone in your building that is on the live in a technologically advanced society with strict government control so we can get their response and share it out.
Okay, freeze. All right, who do we have on this side that would like to share why you would like to live where there is freedom? Uh, I say I like to live where there's freedom because our generation is so dependent on technology these days. And so living free, you will get to learn all of our natural things. And uh, you don't have to be so independent on internet. Very good answer. Very good. Very good. All right. Do we have anyone else who would like to share? All right. Here we go. Um, I believe that we should be where there's freedom instead of like little technology because if we have all this technology and there's the stuff that's advancements that's out here, but we're heavily restricted by the government, we can't use the technology since we're so restricted. And us having freedom and having little technology, technology comes with it, its advancements and it also comes with its like terrible things that could happen to society. So it's a win or lose. So when you take that away and then you have restriction on top of it, you're left with nothing basically. All right. Okay, we have a student from Wilton, Ms. Bick Beshke Bishop. You would like to come and give their response? So I've received a few, but I've only gotten one answer. Um, it says one of our students at Wilton chose to live in the advanced tech society because they could just hack the government. <laughs> Okay, we hear you loud and clear, Wilton. <laughs> All right. Our last would you rather. Oh, we got one more. Sorry, one more coming in. All right. This is coming from Butner STEM Elementary. They would like to live in the technologically advanced society because it would be safer. Oh, there's another one. Um, they're coming in. Uh, this is Butner STEM Middle. Um, Kind of the same thing. They have two students who chose technology over stri um, over stri with stricter government because they said they would feel safer. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So it's great to see that we do have some people outside in our buildings that would like to be living in a technology advanced society. Okay. Our last question: Would you rather? Hear good news before bad news, or hear bad news before good news. So if you would like to hear the good news before bad news, stand on this side. Or if you would like to hear the bad news before good news. <laughs> oh my goodness, look at how it changes over again. Wow. <laughs> All right, find your partner and discuss. Okay, freeze. All right, we have three lovely people on this side that would like to hear the good news before the bad news. So I'm interested in hearing what you all would like to say. Who's going to speak? Okay. I'll say good news because I know how I am. So if I hear the bad news first, it doesn't matter what you say after that. I'm still going to be upset. So it's like, <laughs> um, I'd rather hear the good news first. Okay, good answer. Okay, good, good. All right, on this side. I chose to hear the bad news before the good news because the good news would most likely soften the blow so you're you aren't hurt as much okay thank you great answer anyone else on this side okay share your answer oh it's because um i just don't want to hear the good news first because i can already prepare for the bad news okay thank you very good all right give yourselves a big round of applause as you walk back to your seats thank you for your participation this morning All right, Miss Bishop is going to come with you with them some great news to share with you guys. 
Good morning, everyone. We are excited. I think when I one of the emails I shared the other week to get you all prepared, I said that we were going to have some good surprises. So everyone who is a part, let me rephrase that, all our students who are a part of this um, leadership program here in Granville County Schools, I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Connors if you will pop this up. Your names are all on this wheel. And so we have a lot of names. We're going to spin the wheel. And one of you at this time, actually, we're going to spin quite a few names. And you're going to win some gift cards today from Tyson. So Matthew Mendoza Ovando is our winner. We're going to, and uh, Miss Hunton's going to be writing down these names. And uh, we'll know if you're present with us because I'm pretty sure you'll jump out of your seat. Um, but if not, we'll assume that you are back at one of our live stream locations. And we'll make sure that we get these to you. Um, we'll put them in the... Uh, in the courier as soon as possible. All right, next one. <laughs> All right, we're gonna let Miss Hunt write that down. We're good. All right, next one. We got two more for this go round. <laughs> the Lion Spotswood. All right. And our last one for this round. It looks like all of those will be uh, shared out to our, our schools. So maybe the next time around, we'll have some lucky winners here with us at Mary Potter. All right, we're going to switch gears. Is everybody ready? You ready for a challenge? Okay, well, I think I, I, I'm, I'm taking directions from um, the uh, other stage managers out there. So I think we're going to pause before we get into our... No, okay, we're going to so keep rolling. All right, we may need those. All right, so are we ready for a challenge? Yeah. All right, so moving forward, yes, let's hear it. So we're going to do a team STEM challenge today. So at each of your tables, you will find a bag full of some goodies. I also have some directions, I think, that will be shared out um, if they're not in the bags, but I'm going to read it to you. So if you, at your tables, um, some of you are a smaller group, so you can work in one team, but our larger groups, you're going to break into two teams. We're going to have 15 minutes, and here are our instructions. We will divide into two teams so that we have no more than six students in a team. Each of your teams has already been provided with the materials. So each team should get six cups, one rubber band, and four pieces of string. Your job in a team building activity today is to work together as a team to stack all of your cups into a pyramid. But here's the catch. You cannot touch the cups with your fingers, or any part of your body. You cannot touch the cups directly. So you, as the student teams, and as coordinators, if you'd like to help support, you're going to create a tool and or a method using the strings and the rubber bands to transport the cups to make a pyramid using all six. Are you up for this challenge? All right, Miss Ratliff, 
Can I get you to set a timer? You have 10 minutes. You're going to do it right with your groups. Yep. You have 10 minutes. Ready? Go. And you back in our live streams, um, back at your schools, you're going to do this as well. All of your materials should be available to you and should be ready to rock and roll. So for those of you at home or back at the schools, you may separate your materials in originally using your hands.
right, looks like everybody's finished, so we're gonna go ahead and stop that 10 minute timer. Let's give yourselves a hand. So I have to put a plug in um, for our, I got a couple of pictures. I don't know how fast they did it, but I got some great uh, pictures from Creedmoor Elementary that they were successful. And then I just heard that our students at Early College did it in one minute. So what I want to do now is I want to give some of you an opportunity, if you're willing to stand up here and share, what was a strategy that you and your team used that you felt was a great strategy and helped you be successful? Come on up here, sweetie. All right. So tell us your name. Um, my name's Abby Hernandez. Uh, I'm with JF Webb. The strategy we used was we used two strings and putting them around the cup and then twisting them created enough pressure to hold it around the ridges being able to lift it off the um, table to be able to lift it to stack them up um, apart and then to be able to like if they fell together to, to separate them put the string where the cups met the white ring um, pulling it up fast enough you would have um, just separated them without a struggle awesome great job by a show of hands did anyone else out there use that same strategy we have a little, a little different strategies. All right, tell us yours. We, we used a similar strategy, except we used one string, then we wrapped it around the middle of the cup and then twisted it to where we could lift it and place it. Good job. And any other final strategies? Yes, our Tar River twins and Miss Burnett. You want to show them what we did? Uh -huh. Go ahead. So we took four, all four strings and, and tied them to the rubber band, and then we'd all get aside and pull, and then we'd let go, and it'd be around the cup, then we stacked it. Yeah. All right, well, we hope this activity today helped you stretch your minds just a little bit around not just engineering, but around teamwork and how important it is for all of us to be able to work together. And even if we didn't physically move the cups to be a cheerleader and to support all of our team members. So give yourselves one more round of applause. Great job. Right. Are we ready for a video? Okay. We are not ready for a video, so we're going to keep rolling with our agenda. So, um, one of the things I'd like to share with you today is the next activity that you are going to do as a team. But I'm going to need my PowerPoint, if that's possible. <laughs> All right. So, we, how many of you are familiar with an acrostic poem? Have you ever heard the term acrostic poem? All right. Well, how about we have this young lady. You want to come tell us what, you, what it is before I kind of give my explanation? I'd like to hear what you all know and think about an acrostic poem. And tell us your name, dear. My name's Lily. Um, an acrostic poem is basically you take a word and this you get like words that start with the same letter and normally it's to describe someone. Okay, so you can use a word to describe someone, like a, you take yeah. somebody's name, is yeah. that what you're thinking? Okay, very good, let's give her a round of applause. So that is really what it is, is you take a word, and the example that I have for you today is teamwork, because that's kind of a, an overarching theme for us here in our leadership program. And so we'd figure out how to create a poem, whether it be one word or multiple words, that go along and start with each letter of the big word. So here is my example for you today. If you'll go to the next slide. So if you see, we have teamwork written down the side of our PowerPoint slide here, our, our Googled slide deck, and our word is teamwork. 
So this is the poem that, I came, that we came up with as a team. It says, together, everyone can achieve more when we are optimistic and respectful and kind. And so the words that we create or put in the uh, um, acrostic poem should support the big word, right? So if we did someone's name, we would use adjectives or characteristics of that person. And so here we're looking at this concept of teamwork. And all of these things do align with the concept of teamwork, right? We want everyone working together. We want everyone being successful and to achieve and work together respectfully and be kind and open-minded and optimistic and all of those things. So, your work today, though, next slide, is to create an acrostic poem using the word leadership. Leadership. Leadership can be many things. We want to know what leadership means to you at your school and maybe what leadership looks like at your school and how you are utilizing and being a part of this leadership, student leadership group, how you are implementing leadership in your schools. You're gonna have about 15 to 20 minutes to do this activity. Um, you will be receiving poster board and markers at your tables if you haven't already done so. And I am so excited. We'll have an opportunity at the end to share out a few. And for our schools that are watching live, if you want to take some pictures and send it to us, we'll be, we would be excited to share what's happening out at our live stream locations as well. Is everybody ready? All right. So I need to make sure we understand our assignment, though. Who can tell me what we need to do? Make an acrostic poem using the word leadership. Fantastic. Everybody ready? All right, here we go.
All right, everybody freeze. If you can hear my voice clap once. If you can hear my voice clap twice. If you can hear my voice clap three times. Awesome, awesome, thank you so much. We are bringing this um, activity to a close so we can move on to another activity. But before we do, we want to have an opportunity for our teams to share. Um, and before we have our folks here in the room with us today, um, we do actually have some of our schools that shared some pictures um, with us. And so very quickly, I was able to insert them into the presentation, I think, Mr. Ernie. So you might need to refresh, but there's at least three examples, I think, in the next slide. Nope, you might need to refresh. There you go. Oh, they keep coming in, but I can't get them in there now. So, um, but we've got some great quality work coming from our school sites as well. So here are some of the examples from our out, some of our schools that are not present um, with us today. So let me read these on my end. They're a little larger. So the first one is leading everyone alongside their differences, even when rough situations happen in present time. Very good. All right, the other one says, lead so everyone can achieve dedication, efforts, responsibility, and support can help improve personality. And this last one, I think I, well, no, let me go back. I was like, my eyes are still not that good. Um, this was Susan. All right, we have lead everyone to achieve their dreams with empathy and respect by sharing, helping, and inspiring people. Let's give them a round of applause. Um, just a quick shout out, these entries are, uh, the first two were from Holly Middle School, and then the third one was from Wilton Elementary that came in. And I'm sorry if we didn't get to share all of the ones that were sent in. Um, we are going to, we'll, we'll, we'll be able to compile some of these things and share it out with everyone um, after this event because we do have some amazing work happening in our schools and we always want to get synergy from each other and see what's happening in our different school locations. So um, at this time though, I would like from um, someone from, we're going to actually, I haven't had anybody from uh, Northern Granville come up yet, so um, we're going to put Northern Granville and Phoenix on the spot. They work together over there, and uh, we're going to ask someone to come up and uh, if they'll bring their poster board and share their leadership acrostic first with us today. And they're all saying, not me, not it, not it. Requires determination, equality, respect, sincerity, and honesty in people. Thank you, Northern Granville and Phoenix Academy. All right, which team is next? All right, Tar River, come on up here. Leading everyone in directing efficiently, responsibility, responsibly, and selflessly that helps others and inspires passion. Great job, Tar River. All right, we're going to jump over to JF Webb High School.
Learning to engage with others can achieve individual determination and efficiently achieve respect for self and others, helping us invent problem solving skills. In our final school today, Granville Academy. For our acronym of leadership, we did learning every day and delegating everyone's responsibilities should help in problem solving. And thank you, Granville Academy. And thank you, everyone. Let's give all of our teams and ourselves a round of applause. All right, so we hope that this activity will get you to think about all of the important attributes, characteristics, and skill sets that it takes to be an effective leader. And that you are, in many ways, already exhibiting these characteristics. And that is the reason that you are a part of this leadership team. And we are glad that each of you are here and able to be with us, whether physically in the building with us or out there at, their, at your schools. So we hope you enjoyed this activity and we hope that you will hang these posters in your, in your school buildings where not just you all can see them, but all of the students in your school can see how important leadership is for all of us. Great job, everybody. All right, if I say drum roll, y'all know what I mean. Okay, and stop. We're gonna spin the wheel again. Are we ready? Here we go. <laughs> Anthony Bell. Next, spin. <laughs> Kaylee Broyle. All right, let's do another. Jazara McNeil. <laughs> Leila Brunson Davis. Last one for this round. Come on, be in the house. <laughs> Thomas Thornton, Thomas, Th Thomas Thornton. Thomas, right, Thomas. All right, well, congratulations to all of our winners out there at our school locations because no one jumped out of their seat in here. So um, we will be moving on. I'd like to hand the floor over next to our amazing colleague, um, Miss Angela Cockdale. Good morning.
in, so we're ready for a four corners activity. You have taken each month a word, and each month Dr. McLean, board members have done a video with what that word has meant. And so you've done great activities, your video, we're still working on getting the other videos of the work that you've done this year. So we wanna continue that. And so for the month of February on our next slide, you're gonna see there is a quadrant there with four areas that we're gonna look at with honesty because that is our word of the month for this month of February. You may have already completed some activities with that. So we're just gonna spend just a few moments, but we'll use this as an example to model the first part of this activity. So our next slide, please. So there are four corners in this room, and at your sites, your facilitators have one, two, three, four that they have marked or are in the process of marking their rooms for the four corners. You will see one is here to my left. We've got two over here to my right behind the green screen. We have three, this corner, and number four, we're going to move that banner that said welcome to the Leadership Summit. So those are our four corners. So in looking at the um, slide, you've got the first corner. If you think with honesty, and this is an area that you're interested in talking with colleagues about, is creating a school-wide no cheating pledge. So if that's something that would interest you, you would go to corner one. If corner two, creating a school-wide honesty affirmation statement or song or acrostic poem, if that's what you want it to do. So the creativity, these are just suggestions. You may have something that's better than what we ha have listed up here. So that would be corner two. For corner three, create a bulletin board post of brag tags for students caught being honest. I heard someone over here earlier, where are some positive affirmations? I heard those when we were going through with the cup activity with your STEM challenge. So that is another way for positivity with those brag tags when you see students and you catch them being honest. And then our fourth corner, sharing a short bio of people who may be famous for being honest on the morning announcements. Now, some of you have morning announcements at your school. So you may have had examples of these in your building, in your school community. So these are simply examples of where we are right now. So I have 1016. So to help us plan, I want you to go to your four corners. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take three minutes to discuss this, get some ideas and take, you may wanna take a little note sheet that's there if you've got your phone you've got a note section not on anything else but if you want to use the notes like i live off on my cell phone you can do that so with no further ado for the month of honesty and then we'll pause and then we're going to move to the month of march for diligence and after this one and we're going to continue this activity through our may months okay so it's going to be short so share your ideas collect them record them so that you as a school can then determine how you want to um, execute, share, and publicize these words of the month. Okay, choose your four corners. One corner of the four. Don't be shy. School-wide no cheating pledge, one. Number two. School-wide honesty affirmation statement or song. And if you want to adapt, create something better, that's what good leaders do. participated in a school-wide Unity Day walk where we raised awareness for kindness, except
As you're doing it. As you're doing this, be sure to scribe, and at schools, our leaders, what we want to do is to be able to add these to our Google Doc so that everybody can see the synergy from all the ideas. So make sure we're recording these, and if you want to send us some of the ones that you're using at the end, we'll ask for several examples. Okay. Tidy up the conversations on this one around honesty so that we can move and spend a little more time in the month of March, April, and May. Okay? Go ahead and finish recording your responses because we're almost done with February. This is just to maybe get one last activity that you could potentially do. All right? Let's come back together at the center of the room by the time I count down from 10 to the center of the room. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Can anyone tell me what the word of the month is for March? Diligence, yay! So we're going to move to the next slide. And for diligence, you're going to see four other potential activities that you'll move to that corner to get ideas for. So corner one, displaying student work that are exemplars of diligence throughout the school. Number two, adopting a school-wide role model and learn about their positive character traits, their diligence that they have as a leader. Corner number three, create a discussion board on ways to model diligence in your school and community. Corner four, create a morning show or a commercial advertising diligence, okay? So those are the four corners, and so look back at those to see if any of those interest you. And again, your synergy may generate additional ideas to exhibit the word diligence for the month of March. Okay, on the count to three, I want you to go with walking feet. One, two, three. So what are some activities about the careful and consistent work effort that you're doing for diligence, okay? Careful and persistent work or effort.
All right, finish up your examples that you want to do for diligence. Your due diligence. Okay, and when I count down to 10, let's come back to the center. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So I hope you had a great start to the word of diligence. And you're going to see some of these words continue to overlap together. So diligent, someone said, what is that? That's that careful and the persistent work or effort. Always being persistent, seeing it through, working through that. Mm -hmm. All righty. So we're going to look at the month of April. And on our next slide, does anyone know what the word is? Trustworthiness. Okay. So look at number four. You just had a great opportunity to do an acrostic poem for the word leadership. You can do that as an example for trustworthiness. So that is one, the fourth corner there. The third corner, you can create a bulletin board. We talked about some brag tags that you can do those when you catch students in your school being trustworthy. Okay, looking at number two, we can create interview questions that would determine if someone is trustworthy. So that could be that potential there. So if you're interested in that, that would be corner two. Then corner one, having a school-wide door decorating contest. So those are four examples. So determine the corner that you're there and go share some examples of how you would do that, add on to that, or even more, and how you will execute that. All right, here we go. And you'll have four minutes there. So let's go. One, two. Three, four.
I'm hearing some great ideas. Let's count down to 10 and come back to the center. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And we're going to blast off to the month of May. Does anyone know what that word is before they switch the slide? Does anybody recall? I think it might be meaningful. Huh? It's meaningful for the person to have this courage. That's right. Good, good, good. So for the month of May, we're going to look at courage. And so you will look there, number one, making a list of the ways that you've had courage already this year. Um, you could write that down. You could have everybody else write that down. Or you could take that and spin off on other activities. Like this group did here, we'll get them to share out one of the ones that they just shared um, in just a second. Number two, well, that was number two, right? Number one, make a list of new things you'd like to try, but you're not sure about doing it. So you can create a list of some new things that you may exhibit courage. So your group could talk about that. Number three, a group conversation about imperfection and what it means to fail. Because as good leaders, I can tell you, in my 34 years in this career, I have failed and I've learned from my failures. So you have to remember that we are not perfect. We are imperfect. So having some conversations about that and the lessons learned. Number four, hang a mirror in the hall or classroom and your restrooms with positive, courageous affirmations. I was at Holly Middle School yesterday and I went to the restroom. I saw one of these up on the wall. So you think about that around the school so students can recite them. So you can talk about that and what would those courageous affirmations be. All right. So this is our last one. Come up with some good ideas and discussions. And I'll have a few share out if they want to text from the schools to Becky. We can share out some examples and discussions. All right. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five.
okay, if you want to go ahead and make your way back to the seat, your seats. And I've heard some great examples. If anyone, if we want to take one or two examples and how you may have spun off from your group conversations, anyone want to share? Do we have any examples? Someone wants to share how they did a spin off? I think I heard Webb about. Do you want to come share your video idea that you were talking about having students going around campus? Here we're going to give an example trustworthiness. You got your group was, mm -hmm, your trust of the example that you had. So we were thinking of kind of like pulling people aside or like getting their permission to be able to get their point of view on what trustworthiness means to them and what makes someone trustworthy and or someone they trust with something important or something special. Um, just to be able to see what, look, everyone's different perspective on it because I know everyone thinks for themselves so there's probably going to be a lot of different ideas and um, thoughts towards trustworthiness. And you mentioned the possibly videotaping them or? Um, the recording their, like recording their response or um, recording like them, like, like videoing them um, to be able to maybe put it on, because we have these TVs in like the um, cafeteria, so just posting them with like captions and stuff, being able to like just showcase what we did um, and also having it to be able to report back to like Miss um, Dr. McLean <laughs> and showing her what we did as well. Perfect. in the corner I heard something about personal affirmations and some ideas there anyone want to share I didn't I'm trying to capture who was in that group now I was just listening as I was walking by anybody okay there you go um, we talked about doing like affirmation stations in classrooms and bathrooms so like over the door mirrors and having um, affirmations posted on them so that kids can look in the mirror and recite those to feel better about themselves Thank you. And West Oxford has just sent in that they could put affirmations on the bathroom mirrors. So thank you for texting that in as well. So thinking along the same lines, great example. So your leaders at the schools, there's a shared document that Ms. Bishop has sent out. We want to continue adding those examples because we learn from leaders across our district and across our school communities. So thank you for your input today and keep that great work going. And at this time, I believe it's time to spin the wheel again. So Ms. Bishop. <laughs> Yeah, let me hear that drum roll. All right, everyone. This will be the final time we spin our wheel, but we will spin it seven times this time. And our first winner this round is Eleanor Traster. And our second winner is Addie Harrison. Congratulations. <laughs> and next we have Elias Shannon. Congratulations to Jaden Hester. Is Jaden in the house? 
Oh, okay. I thought. Oh, we got a Jaden, but not that Jaden. Okay. All right. I'm hoping so. And our next winner is Mackenzie Jones. Congratulations. One more? Is this the last one? No. Okay. Keep going. And our next winner is Sam Fuller. This is the last one. Drum roll. Well, that concludes the spinning of our wheel. I know we couldn't all win a gift card, but you are all winners already. So without further ado, I just want to tell you we're going to have a brief um, shift in the agenda. And I think we are moving to our, we're going to move to the video so that we could not see earlier. So if you could please direct your attention to the screen. getting what they need to be successful. We will always be fair, but it will always feel equal. This year, our leadership team has made posters about our monthly character traits. These are some of our examples. When you blame others, you will give away your power to change. Keep calm and respect others. Make a plan and just do it. program has made a PBIS video of what to do and what not to do in school. We taught the students at BSES how to behave in the cafeteria, hallways, bathrooms, classroom, and playground. Let's make this school a better place!
leader at this school. And what I enjoy about being in this club is that I feel really special. This is Kamora and I go to Creekmore Elementary and I am a leader ambassador. And one of the things I love about being an ambassador is that I learn how to reflect on people with my behavior. My name is Ava and I love that we can eat lunch together about the leadership. My name is Bethlehem and what I love being a leader is we get to help the little kids. Hi, my name is Akari Street and I like about uh, um, being a leadership is that I like to reach the pre k Hi, my name is Pierce and what I like about being a school leader is I can help my fellow friends in my class. Okay, my name is Caleb and I, the thing I love about the school leader is I can reach, I want to reach a pre k Hi, my name is Joseph. What I like about being a school leader is I can help people smaller than me. Hello, my name is Atlas, and what I like about being a school leader is to help people be responsible. We have enjoyed getting to know each other and being a part of character building, leadership, and service at our school. Each month, students in our school are recognized as Students of the Month based on our monthly character traits. Several of our leadership team members have been recognized. In October, we participated in a school-wide Unity Day walk where we raised awareness for kindness, acceptance, and inclusion. In November, our fifth grade leaders welcomed our veterans and students to our Veterans Day breakfast. In December, our leadership team organized a school-wide food drive for a local food bank. We encouraged participation and collected many food items to give to people in need. We build character and encourage students to be themselves. We are Mount Energy Elementary. Go Mustangs!
leading the way team for Wilton Elementary. We teach others about our character traits. We make posters to teach people. We've even made a video. We help with the built-in board, and these are the character traits we have done. Respect. Self-discipline. Friendship. Friendship. Perseverance. Responsibility. Responsibility. Kindness. Ah, Butler STEM Middle School, a school with many fun activities and clubs. One club in particular is the Leadership Club, led by our counselor, Mrs. Ward. Known for kindness, helpful people, and most of all, the activities. We are the Leadership Club. Some of the activities we have led this year include a character trait art contest, helping with the new student breakfast, and teaching character trait lessons to the Butner Stem Elementary School kindergarten students, including a toy giveaway. We plan the lessons and activities, and Ms. Ward comes along to take pictures. We have participated in team-building activities, such as a gingerbread house decorating contest, and we have taught chess to the 6th grade chess club. We are now working on a service project to make task cards for the EC class not only to help the teachers with creating the work, but the students to learn. We look forward to all of our spring activities to see what exciting things will be done this spring. The future awaits. Thank you, and have a wonderful day. Middle school, this is Madeline. Now let's stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please continue standing for a moment of silence. Thanks, you may sit down. Hi, I'm Layla Oakley with some important announcements in school news. 7th and 8th graders, please remember to turn in your field trip money to your homeroom teacher. A winter formal dance will take place on the evening of February 10th from 6 to 8 p.m. Tickets will cost $7. Our wrestling Hornets lost to Vance and beat Franklinton at home this evening. Great job, Hornets. On this day in 1870, after accepting the 15th Amendment, Virginia was readmitted to the Union. Hey, this is Morgan with the... Uh new segment called Word of the Month. The word of this month is caring, which means displaying kindness and concern for others. Also today we have our second day of testing. Make sure to make sure to work hard, take your time, and good luck. Make it a great day, Hornets. Right directly in front of us with all the windows. That is Maritime Science Complex. So, for all of us interested in nursing, biology, mathematics, physics, just typically take their classes in there. Yeah. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
two, one. The word of the month of February is honesty. Honesty to me means trust. The word of the month is honesty, and honesty to me is being truthful and respectful. The word for February is honesty. Honesty means to, to tell the truth and be respectful. February is Black History Month. I went to work with the King and fought for equal rights. yelled out to pull her shirt down. But a boy can take his shirt off completely and walk around the track and not get any looks or yelled at or even pulled aside to be talked to. I have never really seen that myself, so See, I cannot form an opinion on that. It doesn't work because kids in PE class. Okay, they so do they the boys. The boys in gym. In gym, yes. The boys walk around with their and, shoes. And, 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 and they walk off with their shoes as a girl. Yeah. Yeah. It is your life. Now, don't get me wrong. Yeah. Your life, I think, I know. for the most part, the dress code is fair. I think it's very a very decent dress code, better than most schools, because I had schools where I was wearing, I'd wear a hole in my, like there would be a hole in my pants on my knee. Like your dress code is. I think this school is way more lenient on dress yes. code than any other school. I care about my fellow Vikings by cheering them on at their sporting events. I show kindness to my fellow Vikings by making them laugh even if they've had a hard day. support my fellow Vikings by helping them out if they miss a day of school. Leadership. 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 Okay, that video was designed for all of you to, one, see the hard work you've done all fall and winter. I think you deserve another round of applause. You did a great job out in our schools in here. Did a really good job. Now you have to plan your spring events, and some of you are already planned, but we hope seeing what other schools have done maybe generates a few other ideas did you see some things you might be willing to try or could consider as you go about finishing up the school year i know i did i thought oh that's neat or hey guys we could maybe try that or let's talk about this i was really impressed as i watched those videos snippets from each of your schools and even some of the planning sessions. So we could not get everyone in person to discuss and talk about all of the, the many things you do, but I hope you were able to see something that could generate ideas or thoughts. So when you get back to your schools or as you're in your schools after this morning's work, start to jot some ideas down about spring work. Okay, you've got a few more months left, March, April and May. You have the words. We now need to think about the activities for those words. So thank you so much for your work. You did a great job throughout the course of your, your fall and winter months. All right, I'm going to turn it over to Miss Angela Cogdill. All right. We want to say 
that leadership has many words. And so one of the words on your acrostic poem over here I see is determination. So we were determined to get that video to work. Another word is agility. We always have to have agility. So we're switching the agenda up one more time. So we're going to have a little agility as we have Grayson and Chap and Trent come join me up here to get ready for their presentations. So we're going to shift a little bit um, and have our optimistic closure with our student speakers. But before we do that, just the videos that you are watching, I know the views in the schools, we are actually filming live here. We have three screens here. So I know the size at the schools may not, may be a little bit harder. So in your next leadership meeting, we're going to make sure you have this video that you can see it all live. Um, if you want to re-see that, because re -see that at your school in a, in a live form. So you've got that and you can share that with um, other students. And I know, as Dr. McLean said, that's an inspiration for you to see what others are doing and the synergy that you build from other leaders in the district. All righty, if I can have Grayson. Trent, Chap, if you want to come on up with me. We were very fortunate last April. Yes, we're going to give them rounds of applause. We were very fortunate last April to bring together our high schools and our juniors and our seniors for a day of leadership. These three are exemplars that were with us. We had a fourth one representing all of our high schools in the district, but our fourth one we appreciate. They're in the nurses' aid program. Couldn't miss their hours today. So we, we do ap appreciate that and the leadership that they're exhibiting for their schoolwork on that. So they're going to share with you what they've learned about leadership, their lessons from since then, and give you some tips and tidbits. So I'm going to let them choose who they want to go first, but let's listen with our good ears as we all continue to develop our leadership. <clears throat> all right, I guess I'm doing this. <laughs> okay, if it's one thing I learned from the leadership program, it's definitely to um, get used to be in uncomfortable situations like now. <laughs> um, but I just want to say um, the definition of leadership is to command or lead a certain group. But I have my own definition is to lead people in the right path um, and influence people positively. Um, there are not always good leaders. There are some bad leaders that will lead you in directions that you don't want to go in. Um, but it's not always leading someone. Sometimes it's good to take the back seat. Sometimes it's good to listen to what other people have to say, um, be open to ideas. Leadership is really a character thing, good character, um, positive person. Um, for those of you who don't know, I play basketball, and I would like to use my coach as an um, example. Um, leaders uplift people. They don't tear them down. And one thing about my coach, you know, I might not be having the best game. I might, you know, drop a ball here and there, you know, miss a layup. I'm good for that. <laughs> <laughs> but one thing about him, he's never gotten on me about it. It's always, you missed it, so what? What are you going to do next to um, make people forget about that missed layup or that walk or that travel or that double dribble? Um, it's always just keep going, don't stop, and you got it. Um, one thing that I have um, accomplished, I would say, um, maintaining my character, because you know, you know how you can get. Um, yeah. <laughs> It's always what you do behind closed doors. It's always good to do things in front of people, but it's better to do things behind closed doors because, one, you never know who's watching. So, um, yeah, that's, that's really it. I want to say thank you to Trent from Granville Central High School. Thank you, Trent. Among today's youth, the gift of leadership is not a given. In fact, leadership is a virtue with, that must be seized. Even those granted such a gift must act upon it. And many of our youth, as gifted as they may be, may not be proactive in using their gifts. However, my young leaders, you are the exclusion from this. 
All of you have demonstrated that you actively lead and facilitate change in your everyday lives. To me, a leader is a doer who influences, energizes, and inspires those around them to positively impact the world. You break the norm and refuse to conform in your everyday lives, and for that, I congratulate you. Leadership is about more than awards and accolades. To you, leadership is about courage, action, and pride. My inspiration to lead comes from my community leaders, like my teachers, coaches, and church leaders. Their ability to step out of their comfort zones when they are called to serve their communities is something that all of us should strive to emulate. It is, however, important to note that leadership is not a task which we can stop today. If you were to positively influence just one person every day for a year, that's 365 people. Every day for 10 years, that's 3,650 people. If they each inspire one person as well, before you know it, your actions can lead to inspiration for millions. As young leaders, we have lives of boundless opportunities before us. So go, my friends, and lead us into the better world of tomorrow. Thank you. And we want to say thank you to Grayson from Granville Early College High School. Um, I'm going to preface this by saying that I was a little bit confused and didn't quite get this. So this is a little bit lengthy, but stay with me. Um, hi, good morning to all. Before I begin, I would like to extend a warm welcome to every person present today. Also, I want to thank all for giving me such an amazing opportunity to share my thoughts on leadership. My name is Chat Burnett, and I'm a junior at JF Webb High School. Mahatma Gandhi, Nelson Mandela, and Martin Luther King are all famous leaders you might be familiar with. But what was common in all of them that made them such famous and remarkable leaders? It was their qualities that persuaded people to respect and follow them. I truly believe that young adults in today's day and age don't understand the influence that they have on each other. I could babble on and on about the importance of making good decisions and surrounding yourself with people who inspire you and help you grow as a person, but I'm 16, and I'd like to think that I understand kids my age. We've all heard it thousands of times, and the goal of this speech is not to make you all yawn or roll your eyes at a repetitive, basic, and downright boring lecture that I could have easily chosen to give, but is, it is to further reiterate the value of leadership within yourself and your community in a way that you can all resonate to. Who is a leader? Well, a leader can be anyone. anyone. In biology, the qualities of a leader could be referred to as learned behaviors. By definition, learned behaviors are ones that develop as a result of experience. Qualities of leaders can be learned, though they may not come in hours, a single day, or even a month. They require the right environment to grow your perception, right thought, the right information, and a will to lead for a better cause. A true leader is someone who is known for their work ethic. A true leader is someone who earns respect through rightful actions. A true leader inspires inspires people to follow in their footsteps to become a guiding light for humanity. A good leader will always lead people towards the path of growth and progress by carrying the torch of wisdom. As the phrase goes, actions speak louder than words. A true leader will never verbally tell people to follow them, but the benchmark that they have set in their actions will allow people to trust in them. Good leaders set the bar and work on the goals to achieve it without compromising morals and ethics. Once again, I want to highlight the phrase, actions speak louder than words. I can tell you all day what qualities leaders possess, but what good would that be if you don't know how to use those qualities? So, how does one apply all those qualities into their daily life? First, take responsibility. Whether that be admitting to making a mistake, volunteering for new tasks, or taking initiative when you're assigned to a group project. Too many people try to shift blame and make excuses, but great leaders take ownership of problems and work to find lessons and solutions. Next, include other people. If I'm being honest, this has always been a struggle for me. My mindset for a long time was that of taking everything on by myself because, well, if you want something done right, do it yourself. <laughs> but through experience and reflection, I've come to the realization that such mentality is toxic and will never contribute to leadership or growth. The level to which you can involve others or offer to help others shows the level to which you're ready for leadership. So, help a friend with that math problem. Get others' inputs on projects. Don't live in a bubble where the only thing you're surrounded by is yourself. Through collaboration with other people, you'll build relationships with the people you lead. Lastly, speak up. This can also refer to my last point of including people. Stand up for what's right. I know we all know right from wrong, and leaders will never take a seat to people advocating for the wrong. Speaking up also means being willing to share ideas. 
If you truly believe that you have something to offer to your group or community, you owe it to them to use your voice to convey that. I know we all have fear of judgment and disapproval from others, but if we don't speak up, we will never grow as individuals and never be able to be in a leadership position. I mean, have you ever heard of a leader who sat silent and took a back seat to other people because of fear of judgment? Swallow your fear, for your voice is far more significant. Leadership is all about thinking for the benefit of others over the benefit of self. It is thinking for society and linking self-goal to the goal of the society. The real essence of leadership is when a leader pays attention to the needs of their followers and works in the direction to fulfill those needs. History is filled with stories of various types of leadership and leaders but all reflected one common trait, selflessness. To conclude, I would like to add that to be a great leader is equal to being a great human. To be a great leader, you need to have the quality to lead the making. So, start cultivating them and be a source of inspiration for others too. Once again, I wanna thank you all for this incredible opportunity and I hope you all have something to take away as leaders. And can we say thank you to Chapman? Thank you, Chapman. You all stay good. Okay. I think we just heard some of the most profound statements of leadership we could hear. Would you agree? Yes. And they're right here in our school system. I was simply blown away and elated last spring when I had the opportunity to work with students like these. But I'm even more impressed this morning with the growth I've been able to witness in all three of you. I, at this time, would like for us to give them a few pieces of gifts back to them. So at each table, I'm going to come to you in about 60 seconds, and I want you to tell them something you've taken away from what they just said. What is something you'd like for them to know you heard from what they just said? Take 60 seconds and talk with people at your table. What would you like for them to know you just heard? That's always a gift to a presenter. Talk with people at your table. You actually have about 40 more seconds left. So let's talk, okay? For those of you in our schools, if you will text Mrs. Bishop, some things we can say at this time, it would be awesome. What are some takeaways you heard we can share with our speakers? All right, about 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. So at this table, what is something you heard from our speakers. Um, even I, what I took from Chef, I usually do like to work by myself and I don't like to let other people get in my space, but to be a leader, you have to work with people and you have to help people. And also what he said about the uplifting people, that usually helps me, like when people give me positive things, when they say about me, it uplifts me. So I feel like if I do that with other people, then I can help them with it. Uplifting people and working with people. Is that important in leadership? Absolutely. Great. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. Thank you, table one. Table two, what is something you all heard? Yes. Um, that I heard nice and loud was, for me, sweetie. Something I heard was that the part about being a little where you don't just do everything, you can't just do everything. So being a leader is not just about you know, doing everything yourself, but it's to help people, you know, the other, the other people in your team. Absolutely. You can't do everything yourself as a leader. You have to help others, and it's about teamwork. Excellent. Would anyone else like to share as well? I feel like they were, I feel like they were talking about how a leader has to learn from someone else. So there's always somebody you can, a one leader to look up to in order to like project down to someone. Absolutely, leaders learn from others, right? We can always get better at what we're doing. And I'll tell you, I might be the superintendent, but I bet there's a better way for me to learn to do things. So I always find other people who are doing things better. 
I always seek to be better and to do better. We can all do that in our work as leaders. Excellent. Thank you, table two. Table three. Yes. Something I heard is if you want something, you don't always get it yourself. That's right. Because you can let someone else do it, and that way you can be a good person. Very good. You can let someone else help, right? Leaders can pick others. Is there another? Yes? So one piece that I took away was that be a great human and a great leader. Because being a great human makes a great leader. Excellent. You can be a great human and a great leader. Being a great human makes a great leader. Great point. Thank you for that. And table four, what would you all share with us? What was a good takeaway? this young man absolutely isn't that nice Trent coached him oh. and that Trenton is a good leader for this young man isn't that wonderful absolutely incredible one of our schools sent this in the importance of working together with others that came in from early college leaders have to be able to do that you might be the leaders of this particular initiative in your school, but reach out to others in your school building and try to uplift them as well and encourage them to take on leadership roles right along with you. Your principals may have chosen you to do this work, but you reach out to others to help do this work, okay? I'm so proud of you all. On behalf of our district, it isn't much, but we certainly want to help you a little bit Maybe for lunch today. How about that? Yeah. I can do lunch today. Maybe this is for lunch tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. All right. Let's give them a round of applause and say thank you. Great job. You all can come on down. Wonderful. Excellent. 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 All right. For our last activity of the day, is that right? The book? We have time. We have time. For those of you watching, some of you were in the room with us the last time when we had Les Lemonette with us from Scholastic. And I'll be very honest, those of you in the room probably got to watch Les Lemonette. He was the author from right here in North Carolina, um, but we could not quite afford to get Mr. Les back because Scholastic paid for that for us. So we have his book hot off the press. There was a piece in that book about leadership. Remember, there were some hens and a peacock and a dog, and folk had to work together on that farm to get some things done. Do you remember that book? Well, Mr. Laminac's book has finally been published, and it was released on February 7th. It's that hot off the press. Now, that also means it's expensive. So we've not been able to get our hands on a book for everyone, but you will be able to take home two per school and have it available at the school. But we will end our day with the reading of the book because everyone wanted to know, what happened to that egg? Do you remember the book with the egg? What happened to the egg? Well, we now know what happened to the egg. And our staff is going to tell you what happened with the egg. We're going to end our day with Les Lemonac's book um, entitled, let's have the title here, Three Hens, a Peacock, and the Enormous Egg by Les Lemonac and illustrated by Henry Cole. So we're just going to end the day with this little fun book around leadership. So let's have a little fun with this piece. Everything on the Tucker's farm was business as usual. The cows grazed in the meadow and the hens pecked around the hen house. The peacocks strutted by the roadside. 
and the old hound rested on the porch, watching. Then things got interesting. A truck carrying a big crate rumbled up the road, banged through a pothole, and whizzed by the farm. And all that noise got everyone's attention. The crate had bounced off the truck. Sitting there in the road was an enormous egg. The peacock, the old hound, and the three hens scurried down the path for a closer look. The hens flapped their wings in amazement. Grief! Mildred clucked. Who can have laid such an enormous egg? Martha squawked. We must get back inside the crate. Mabel cackled. It's not safe to leave it out here in the road. The hens scrambled behind the enormous egg and pushed. It barely moved. The old hound shoved the egg with his nose, and it just wobbled around in circles. Well, let's try working together, everyone, said the peacock. He swept his long tail feathers against the egg while the hens gently rolled it back into the crate. The hens cheered. We did it! We have to hurry, warned Mildred. We must get this crate inside the barn before a car comes along. Everyone crowded behind the crate and pushed with all their might. But nothing happened. The hens had a quick chat, then turned to the peacock and the old hound. You two keep this egg safe. Mildred clucked. We'll be right back. And before long, the hens returned with two cows lumbering behind them. Can you help us get this crate to the barn? Squawked Martha. The cows sized up the situation and then set to work. They eased the crate toward the barn while the peacock cleared away pebbles to smooth the path. And the old hound trotted alongside the crate. Watch out! Cut your time! Squawked the hens. They almost, they were almost at the barn when the crate hit a bump. The egg is rolling away, everybody! shrieked the peacock. The old hound sprinted ahead and sprawled out across the path and the egg came to rest against his soft belly. Goodness gracious sakes alive, cackled Mabel. I thought our egg was a goner. The animals nudged the enormous egg back inside the crate, but this time the old hound stepped in and curled himself around the egg. And the cows slowly pushed the crate into the barn. Once inside, the hens and the peacock gathered some hay for a nest. And then the cows and the old hound rolled the egg into it. Now someone must sit on this egg and keep it warm if we expect this chick to hatch, cackled Mabel. Move over, everyone, clucked Mildred. I have hatched more eggs than any of you. She hopped up onto that egg, but she barely covered half of it. Let me try, squawked Martha. I'm the biggest hen. She struggled to the top of the egg. She squirmed and she stretched, but she couldn't cover it either. Mercy me, cackled Mabel. I have the fluffiest feathers. Maybe that will do the trick. She climbed onto the enormous egg, but she could not do any better than the others. Mildred looked at the peacock. 
Perhaps you should give it a try, she clucked. The peacock clambered onto the egg, but even he was not big enough for the job. Well, I do declare, cackled Mabel. I believe our egg needs three hens and a peacock. If the four of us sit on the egg all day, who will do our jobs on the farm? Squawked Martha. Could we egg sit at night? Oh, yes, let's do that. But who will keep our egg warm during the day? All eyes turned to the old hound. Who, me? He asked. I don't know how to hatch eggs. Somebody's got to do it. Clucked Mildred. Or the egg won't hatch. I'm sure you can think of something. Well then, I'll figure it out. That night, as the stars began to twinkle, the hens and the peacock gathered to sit on the enormous egg. And the next morning, as the others went about their chores, the old hound headed to the barn. He had a special job to do. And for a while, things seemed to go well, but early one evening, the peacock found the three hens huddled around the egg in a wad of worry. Something's not right, squawked Martha. Eggs never take this long to hatch. Maybe enormous eggs just take longer, the peacock suggested. Mercy me, cackled Mabel. You could be right. Well, we'll just have to keep at it, clucked Mildred. And so they did. Each night while they kept the egg warm, they imagined what this big chick would look like. And every day the old hound kept the enormous egg warm. Then one morning, a crack spread across the shell. The egg was beginning to hatch. The hens and the peacock did not hear the peck, tap, peck, 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 tap coming from inside the egg, but the old hound heard it. He raised his head and howled the news. And the hens and the peacock rushed to find him cuddled around the egg. A piece of the shell fell away and the egg broke open. Crack! Out popped an enormous head. Why, she's as big as one of us, cackled Mabel. I've never seen a chicken with eyelashes, squawked Martha. She's a strange looking chick, that's for sure, clucked Mildred. She's just perfect, said the old hound. And after that, everything on the Tucker's farm did not go back to business as usual. But no one seemed to mind. So that's what happened to that egg. My goodness. All right. We've had an absolutely wonderful day with each of you. We so enjoy having the incredible leaders you are in our schools helping your principals emphasize character, citizenship, and leadership every single day. You're phenomenal. You're wonderful. Remember, you matter and you lead. We may very well have one more session at the end of the year. We are not certain yet. So we will be in touch with your advisors, okay? What we want you to do in the meantime is to continue leading your schools with your words of the month, all right? We will be in touch. Keep being fabulous. We love each and every one of you. This concludes your leadership work for the winter session. Have a fantastic day.